Hey guys, long time no see. It's been almost two weeks since my last Facebook Live and so much life has happened, so much has been going on. And, um, you know, so just wanted to share a little bit and do a little bit of uh, prophetic ministry. But EP Ontario, Merging Profits Ontario, we officially launched and um, we launched on January 11th with our first online class. And then last weekend on January 20th, we had our first in-person meeting here and we had the global EP community director, Peter, um, Peter Isis and his wife, Lisa, they flew in from Halifax and just, we had an incredible, incredible time. And, you know, it's, I've been doing online ministry for three years now. It'll be three years in March. And, you know, it's such a gift and a blessing to be able to be online and to be able to connect with people in all different areas. But there is something so incredibly special that happens when you get together in person. And so, you know, there there are 11 students in the Emerging Profits Ontario class. And, um, you know, 11 is a great number. I still feel like there's somebody else who's supposed to sign up. And so, you know, it's not too late to join if you're still on the fence with it, but it was just such an incredible time to be here, to be in my house, to have worship together, to, you know, do in-person teaching, to be able to eat together, share a meal together. Hey, Nate Bontrager and Dina Dina, good to see you guys, you know, and so it's just so much has been like, you know, such a flurry of activity and excitement and, you know, stepping forward, taking territory, just stepping into these new things that God has, you know, this is, is so exciting. I know you guys who I just greeted, you're, you're in the U S but, um, you know, this is super groundbreaking for Canada. Like just really, you know, we put our peg in the ground here and we are taking territory. So it's super exciting, you know, so as much like love, totally love online community. And I'm, I am continuing to do that. But to be together in person, you know, here occupying the land, being together in community was just was was such a blessing. You know, there's there's so much safety in community and family and connecting together and just th there's a really high community priority in the emerging profits world because it's so important that we're not lone rangers and that we're not you know, detached, that we're not, you know, just out there doing our own thing, separated from the body of Christ. And so, you know, it was super special to have, you know, Peter, the global director of EP, you know, him and, and um, you know, Keith Fronte and Marguerite have really been, you know, supporting me and supporting this launch. And so just knowing that there's really a strong apostolic and prophetic, like, backing and support and that, you know, really it's this larger community. But so it's been so exciting. It's been it's been really really exciting. Hello Kimberly Jason and Joanne forget. You know, and so that's why I haven't been on here for a couple weeks and um you know, so <laughs> when you have a baby, um so that's kind of what I feel like I just gave birth and so I I have this beautiful new baby, these 11 students in the uh the emerging profits ontario school and so it, it you know you're catching your new rhythm your new grace and you know there's just new curriculum new content that i've been teaching and um there's such a beautiful grace for it and we have such an incredible community and just to see you know even being together in person for the first time and just seeing the warmth and the love and just the atmosphere and the hospitality and just really that sense of community and connection it's um you know it's unlike you know anything that i have felt here in canada like there's really been that lack of that prophetic community prophetic company you know no sense of like a, a eagle's nest or prophets gathering unless you know maybe some big speaker came in that drew out all the prophets in the region but you know so it's kind of been feeling like it's it's filling you know this this little bit of a need here just in, in, in the nation and um you know so it's groundbreaking taking territory and um you know it reminded me a little bit of back in um, Nate, you were there in California in uh, back in July. Like it reminded me of that, like on a small scale, like when we were all together, merging prophets from all over the world, we came together in California for our conference. 
And I remember like meeting my EP community in person. Um, actually, you know, I met Nate first in Ohio, but when we were together, whether it was in Ohio or California, just that sense of like family, like these are my people. This is my purpose, like training up, equipping people in the prophetic. And you know, guys, I heard it said, I, I don't remember um, where this quote came from, but I heard it said that when you find your people, you find your purpose. It might have been Pedro Adeo. I think that's where I heard it from. But that in finding your people, you find your purpose. And, you know, I there has been, you know, there is such a, you know, there's some people who are really, you know, they've got their, their prophetic destiny. They've got their words. They know where they're going. They have found their people. They're running forward. They're, they're like, you know, you've got vision, but there is also a sense of, a of, of like a purpose depression that a lot of people are struggling with in, you know, and it's not just out there in the world outside of Christ, but even, even in the body of Christ, there are people who don't understand like who they're called to and what their purpose is because they haven't found their people. They haven't found their community. And, you know, in Canada here, there's been that sense of like, you know, like it's probably in the U S too, where there's like a lot of like Lone Ranger prophets, but because the prophetic has been so, you know, um, it's been so pushed down and, and kind of like squashed in the like larger, body of Christ, just with the, you know, the, the religious, um, we'll just say kind of like the overarching spiritual territorial things that I don't want to give too much attention to, but there's been a real sense of like a pushing down of, of the prophetic voice and not really embracing it. And it hasn't been well integrated into the church, like, and accepted at large, you know, and part of that, it, you know, part of it has been because there has been an unhealthy expression of the prophetic and there hasn't been, you know, there hasn't been that strength in training and equipping and, and, you know, community and in like really being in places where, you know, we're, we're growing together and we're, you know, we're, we're okay. Like we're okay. We're like, even if we're children in the prophetic, even if we're just like getting our feet wet, like we're, as we're growing, as we're developing, as we're coming to a place of health, like we're going to make mistakes and we need a, to have, you know, a place to step out and to try out and to practice in the prophetic. And, you know, you can never like, you can't do anything in perfection or with, with excellence unless you have our given space and have opportunities to really be equipped and trained up. And so I'm just super excited. Like this is next level. Like this is taking it to the next level and, you know, this is just the first, this is the first Canadian Emerging Prophet School, but there's going to be more. This is the first, there's going to be more. You know, hello, Marlene Hood, Dan Armstrong, Cassidy Mikula, George James, Betty Shelley, good to see you guys, Nicole Carson, Diane Wallace, hello, hello. You know, and so anyway, this has been super, super exciting. So just celebrate with me. Pray with me, you know, pray for the prophetic in Canada, pray, you know, just, um, you know, for the success of this school, that the right students would come in, you know, and there's one thing, you know, so this is new, but a lot of you guys know, some of you even on here have been in my prophetic mentorship group. And so I'm still running. I just want everybody to know that, you know, even though I have been pushing, pushing, pushing for the Emerging Prophet School and I've been pushing and promoting and, and it's up and running, I am still running my prophetic mentorship group. And so really just want to like, you know, let people know that this is still happening and it's not just for Canada. So I have a prophetic mentorship group that's been running for two years online. And so the way it works is people sign up for six months at a time. And, you know, we, I teach people, I've, I've always said it was like prophetic gift training, but it's so much more than that. So it is growing in the prophetic, learning how to prophesy, which is not just for prophets. Prophecy, you know, there's the fivefold offices in Ephesians 4, you know, there are gifts of Christ and we don't get to decide what, you know, if we have those ones, but then there's the first Corinthians 12s 
12 gifts and the gift of prophecy, which is a gift of the spirit. And we can all access these gifts of the spirit. So we can all prophesy. So the prophetic mentorship is really just for people who are hungry, who want to go to the next level, who want to have strong new covenant foundations, who want to grow in community, who want to just be with a group of believers who are committed who are hungry and committed to grow going forward and get a level of equipping that most people are not getting in the local body of Christ. You know, because the local the local church, you know, has you know, different ministries, different churches have different visions, different mandates, different things that they're called to focus on, different things that they're called to emphasize in different seasons. And so not every church is a highly prophetic church. But if you are drawn to the prophetic and you're like, okay, I'm really drawn to this, maybe you're drawn to me, maybe you're drawn to other prophetic people, or maybe you yourself, you're very aware that you have you know, revelatory gifts. Maybe you can see in the spirit. Maybe you're a really big dreamer or you could get words of knowledge. Maybe you're a feeler. You feel atmospheres. You can feel emotions. You know, whatever it is, like we can have these gifts, but we need to like learn how to use them, how to be, um, you know, trained up in them and and learn how to rule our gifts so that our gifts don't rule us. And, um, you know, we're talking about that um, in our mentorship group last night just how some of our gifts, um, you know, if you're a feeler, like I'm a feeler and, um, you know, I have multiple ways that I receive revelation, but I'm such a strong feeler. And so, you know, there's different levels to it, but when you're first starting out, it sometimes it just feels like feeling emotions. And, you know, when you don't, when you aren't mature in it and you don't understand how to discern you know, between soul and spirit, between your own spirit and like other spirits, you know, you just take everything on and you just think that everything you feel is you, but there's so much that we're actually feeling in the atmosphere. And it's like, God is giving us information, not so that we can be tormented by, you know, whether it's feelings of fear or anxiety, um, you know, or anything, but it's so that we, we can feel what's going on. It's like a word of knowledge in a way so that we, because we carry the breakthrough and we're the atmosphere shifters. And so I love to train people and equip them so that they know how to use their gifts, you know, and Nathan, thanks for that, that comment. You carry such a great mother heart as a prophet, you know, and this is the thing, like, We need to shift like God is calling for the mothers and the fathers to rise up. And for us to get out of this, you know, this competition, this vine for like, you know, you know, when you're, when you're, you're a child, like uh, brothers and sisters, you know, there's that little bit of a fight between siblings, rivalry, you know, fighting for attention, position, you know, there's that kind of like, but when you're a mother and a father, it's a different it's a different level. So it's no longer like, you know, your button heads with your brothers and sisters and like trying to like get ahead and trying to prove yourself. But it's a different place where it's like God is calling us to get, you know, to mature and to rise up beyond that childhood ways into the, the mothering and fathering roles where we can really be those parents who, you know, because parents champion their children. Parents are not insecure about their children. They're not intimidated by their children's successes. And they, you know, healthy parents don't want to limit their children, but they want to see them rise up and step into the fullness of everything that God has for them. And so this is, you know, this is my heart in the mentorship and the prophetic and in the Emerging Prophets Ontario School. You know, and I always just say, use this picture and I heard Emma Stark say it. You know, it's not about, we don't want to race and run up the mountain alone. It's not a race to the top to see who can get to the highest position, the fastest and get there first. It's about going in family, going in team. And it's about linking arms with one another and going up the mountain together and bringing people into close relationship with God. And, you know, another thing I was teaching last night in the mentorship group, talking about like true prophet and false prophet, you know, and you, you discern between the two, you know, because you can have a legitimate God given accurate prophetic gift and be a false prophet. 
we judge the prophet by its fruit, which has more to do with character than gifting. Though, yes, you need to have, you know, developed your gift and you have, you, you know, if you're going to prophesy, you need to, uh, <laughs> you need to have a level of accuracy in what you're releasing and you need to take responsibility for what you're releasing. But, but what makes, you know, what makes a true prophet versus a false prophet? It's about the motivation of the heart. It's about what is the purpose? Are you drawing people to yourself or are you drawing people to the father and to God? You know, and so the prophetic is, you know, it's though the prophetic mentorship group that I run is prophetic gift training, it goes so much deeper because the prophetic is, it is the foundation of our relationship with God and understanding this relational aspect. So it's not just for the prophet. Don't say I'm not a prophet and tune me out, you know, because we all need to understand that how do we have a relationship with a God if we don't know how to hear his voice? We all need to grasp this gift of the spirit. It says like desire, you know, earnestly desire spiritual gifts, especially prophecy. You know, prophecy isn't just for you to give words to other people, but it's for you to connect and commune with God in a way that you can prophesy over yourself before you prophesy over other people and just let God speak to you. Learn the languages of heaven. Learn that there isn't just one way that God speaks, but there's so many different frequencies of heaven and that God is speaking and he is, you know, he is a chatterbox and he is constantly, there's a constant flow of information and revelation and God, you know, he shares his secrets with his friends and he wants us to know him. And it's all about that. It's about knowing him. So I like to train people and equip them in the prophetic for the purpose of relationship with God and knowing him. Because there is that really scary verse in Matthew 7 that it says that many will stand before him in that last day on the judgment day and they'll say, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not prophesy in your name? And he will say, depart from me. I never knew you. So intimacy. Intimacy, intimacy, intimacy. So yes, I do prophetic gift training, but I don't want to teach you how to prophesy well if you're not interested in a relationship with God. Because it's dangerous to have the gift and not be connected to the giver. You can also have the gift and have it anointed by the wrong spirit. But when we grasp this incredible you know, the fullness of the Holy Spirit and everything that has been made available to us. And we learn that like we can live in this place of communion and connection and that, you know, that he speaks in so many different ways and that he's not withholding from us, but he wants us, you know, he, he doesn't just like speak to us loudly in an audible voice all the time, but he wants us to pursue him. He wants to hunger after him and he hides things so that we would, we would search after them diligently, just like Jesus spoke to people often in parables, but he didn't just speak plainly because he said, you know, people seen having eyes to see and not seeing and ears to hear, but not hearing. He wants to see those who are really, really diligent and willing to look into the you know, go after things and go after the answers and pursue the more of God. You know, and sometimes we have to fight for it and we have to be diligent and we have to go after it. You know, and so I just want to invite, like, I want to invite you if you feel like you would like to grow in the prophetic, if you would like to, you know, learn different ways of like how to prophesy different ways, how to hear the voice of God. If you just need a safe place to practice, a place to grow and to, you know, be trained up to be coached. I actually, um, so usually it costs $500 for six months of mentorship. And, um, that's just the cost that I've been running it for the last almost two years. And um, I've decided because I've been pushing so hard with the Emerging Prophet School and I haven't been promoting the mentorship group for the last, you know, several months as I've really been pushing on the school until Valentine's Day. I'm actually offering a discount. 
So instead of $500 for six months of mentorship, it's gonna be $444 for people who sign up in the next two weeks. So between now and Valentine's Day. So I just wanted to offer that discount so that we can get some new people in, get some fresh energy because, you know, just because I've launched the Emerging Profit School does not mean that I'm slowing down with what I'm doing online and I'm not slowing down with the mentorship group. Um, at the moment, I think I have, I have 11, 11 or 12. Actually, I have 11, 12 students in the group, but one is also in my school. So students from, it's not just Canada, but it, within Canada, I have multiple students in Ontario. I have a student in Newfoundland, British Columbia. I just had a student sign up who lives in Hawaii. Um, I've got Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and then a student that's in Germany. So, you know, and my student in Germany, like she just blows me away. She, like, when we meet at 7 p.m. Eastern time, it's 1 o'clock in the morning for her. She's there every week from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m., her time. And it just, like, I'm like, God, like, what an honor to be able to speak into the life of someone who is so hungry and is just so, you know, going after God and is just, like, you know, doesn't have anything in her area, you know, where she, you know, she doesn't have that, strength that prophetic church that group and so it's like it's just so beautiful with technology that we can come together and that we can do that and yeah I know Debbie like that's what hungry looks like it's it's just it's so incredible and not only does she come every week but like she is always a joy like she is just glowing and just has a smile on her face and you wouldn't know it's the middle of the night I don't know if I'm that devoted quite honestly but you know, it's just like the hunger, the hunger. And it's just so, so beautiful. So, all right, just gonna say hello to a few of you guys. Debbie Shakespeare, welcome back to Canada. I assume you, pro it's the 30th, yes, you got back yesterday. And Sherry Gaither Richardson, hello. Leanne Bontrager, Joanna Tolley from Texas, Juliana, uh, Julianne August, hello, hello. Michelle Lee, good to see you guys. You know, and I, I did notice a couple new people on here um, that I've not. Drop me, let me know where you're tuning in from if I'm not familiar with you and remind me. I may have even forgot. Hello, Veronica Lopez. So good to see you guys. So I will do a little bit of ministry. Marlene Reed, Marlene Hood, <laughs> Alita. Samudia, hope I didn't butcher your name too bad. Katie Long, hello, you must be back from your trip. So good. Okay, Cherie, I said your name wrong. I think it's Cherie. Okay, Veronica, you're from Fresno. Okay, Cherie, I'm gonna prophesy over you. <laughs> yeah. Who? Wow. Cherie, I just see you stepping out in... Um, Wow, I see you stepping out with this newfound, just this confidence. I see you this this newfound confidence that you have, and it's like your face is set like flint, and I just see you moving forward in the things that God has, um, you know, that the God has that God has put in, put in your heart, and that He's. You're stepping into this season where it's like that for such a time as this, where you're like, wow, like this is what I was created for. This is what like, you know, all the things that I've walked through, all the places of pain, the areas of healing where you've really gained authority. I just, you know, see that this is your season. And I see such an incredible strength in you, Sherry, where you, you know, it's like you... It's like you've been in spiritual boot camp and you've been training and training and training. And I just see like this promotion in the spirit that is like no longer are you the one who's like being commanded in training. But now it's like you are, I just see you stepping into more of a like commanding kind of leadership position. And I just see like it's all the things that you just faithfully went after and you, you know, you stuck it out. I see this thing of perseverance on you where you you know, it's like you're, you're like that pit bull. Like you, when you know that God has like 
called you to something and has asked you to do something, you sink your teeth into it. And it's like you hang on and you don't let go. And it's like, I just see your perseverance, even in times of great pain and perseverance and holding on, even at times where it was a great cost to you and you would not let go. You just would not let go. And I just see the Lord is so pleased with your faithfulness and just your that tenacity where even where it seemed like everything was coming against you and there were voices of of like friendly voices of friends of family of those who would speak and, and you know didn't understand the vision that you had in trying to get you off course but i see that you had just set your face and you just you 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 put your hand to the plow and you didn't turn back and so i just hear the lord saying well done good and faithful servant and he is elevating you i just see him putting like this badge of this badge of honor on you. He says, I am going to honor you publicly for the battles and the victories that you won in the secret place and the things that you warred with that people didn't know that you were fighting and the things, you know, the, the, the demons that you battled and you won and there is a reward for you in this season. And so I just bless you. I see you picking up, you know, I see you, you know, it, there, there's, there's like a assignment and a generational blessing in your family line. And I see like it coming down and I just see you taking the baton, you know, picking up the baton and moving forward into this season. And so I just see that, you know, it's like heaven is backing you. There is just an assignment. It's an assignment that it's like, um, there's like a prophetic, there's like a prophetic anointing, a prophetic mantle that's actually gone back several generations in your family line and 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 I some of your your like ancestors like parents grandparents they didn't actually have um a great framework or a lot of support to really support them to nurture this and to help them really cultivate the fullness of what God had put on the inside of them but I see you coming into this beautiful place of fruition and blossoming where that which is um, in some ways lay, lay dormant for, for multiple generations past, you know, it's like that seed, but it was an incorruptible seed that was put in your family line. And now it's in you. And now it is, God is nurturing it. And God is going to like, you're going to get to taste the fruit of it as you really step up. And, and I just see, it's like, he is just like, who, you know, I think it's like, I see this picture, uh, who, it was like you were like a hard nut to crack like and i just see you know there was this like you know god god has saturated you with like the oil of his presence and i just see that like he's just so met you in such a powerful way and that oil of intimacy is just so saturated all the hard places that there's just such a beautiful softness sherry and um you know, and so it's like I see this this newfound softness in this strength that you have and you moving forward. God is going to show you the right people to connect with in this season who are going to help you to flourish and to become the fullness of who you are. So just continue to move forward. He's got you. He's he's removed you out of some connections and some alignments but he's also brought in some very special strategic alignments for you he's resorted and reshuffled a lot of your relationships because he is placing you in a it's in a larger space in a place where you're actually going to be able to let as that you know as what's planted inside of you comes to fruition your roots are going to go down really really deep and so i just bless you he's putting you into this bigger place where your roots are actually going to be able to penetrate and you won't find yourself, you know, um, coming up against the rocks, so, so to speak. So bless you, Sherry. And thanks for the correction on the pronunciation of your name. Pam cared. Pam from New Zealand. I'm going to prophesy over you. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to prophesy over you. Who? Okay, but Sherry, you're saying that spot on. You received that. You are welcome. I don't know Sherry at all. I don't know anything about her. Don't even remember where she's from. 
Pam. <laughs> Pam. Wow, Pam. Oh my goodness. This is, you are, wow. I just see you, I see you stepping into a season, like boldly and courageously stepping into a season of incredible fruitfulness. And it's like, I see you like as one of those, um, you know, the trees in Revelation, it talks about the trees, you know, the, the rivers come out from the throne of the Lord and there's trees on either side of the river that bear fruit in every season, like in every month bear, bearing the 12 fruit. And I see that, Pam, I see like, um, I see so much fruitfulness, so much fruitfulness. And it's just not in one specific, like it's so many different kinds of fruitfulness in so many different areas. And, um, you know, and I think that there's been a little bit of a wrestle on the inside of you with like, okay, where is my specific, you know, what is my specific call? Where is it? Is it to this group? Is it to the church? Is it, you know, and, and all this, but it's like, I see, I see that the Lord has so many different kinds of assignments for you. And it's like, you have been so patient in the process. And I know you don't feel like you've been patient in the process, process, but I feel like the Lord is like, well done, you know, in patiently enduring. And, and because of your patience, it's just like, who? it's like, this is the season. This is the time of the rivers in the desert the rivers and the wilderness. And it's like, I just see the rivers coming in from so many different directions and the Lord just trusts you. Like he has done so much in you to mature you, to develop you, to advance you. You are just so cloaked in this mantle of like this wisdom and this revelation. And you have such a relatability and people just, people are drawn to you and people trust you. And it's like, um, you know, you have this maturity and this wisdom about you, but yet you're not intimidated. And so people are like, you're very unassuming. And so it's kind of like, I see you having this ability to reach people at different levels, like the high level, like the higher level, like influences and influencers and leaders, but then also people who you know, might be earlier on in their journey and really just kind of like need some like mothering and coaching. And I just see like God, you know, using you and you having this unique ability to like really see people, to see their strengths, to see their weaknesses, to love them where they're at, to love them in the midst of the process and this ability to individuate and to just see like, okay, this is what you know, this is the soil of this person's heart. And so this is as much as I can sow into them. And then other people, like you just have this wisdom to know like how much to give. And it's so like, you don't even have to like, it's just so intuitive. And it's just like comes to you so naturally. And so I just see like your just the way that you flow in revelation and in the prophetic, it's just in a way that is like, it's so, it's in every fiber of your being. And yet sometimes you don't look like the conventional, like, oh, she's a prophet, but it's, <laughs> it's very unconventionally conventional. And so I just see so much fruitfulness and I see you in, you know, I, Cool. Yeah. You know, and I do see a bit of an apost. There is like an apostolic grace there. And I see part of this like fruit in so many different areas is because there is an apostolic grace, you know, and so you've had different seasons where you've tasted of all the like, you've tasted of the teacher, you've tasted of the pastor, you've tasted of the prophet, you've ta tasted of the evangelist. And so it's like you've had these times in your life where, you know, you've been adaptable and you've gone on assignments and you've been willing to fill certain roles and step into positions and to serve in ways, you know, in all those different areas that didn't just look like, oh, profit. And it's just so beautiful. And that willingness to serve and to go, you know, to go where you're needed, but then also to bring to the table what is needed. And so Pam, I just bless you. I bless you in this season of fruitfulness. 
you are a ray of sunshine and I just see your face so illuminated with the glory of the Lord. And it just reminds me of like when Moses, you know, Moses came out from his time with the Lord and he was just so radiating that he, you know, hid his face behind a veil. But I just see this. I see you reflecting the glory of the Lord with such radiance. <sighs> yeah. So I just bless you, bless you, bless you. Enjoy this season of abundant fruitfulness, this delayed gratification. It is your time of reward. Yeah. Who? I love, oh, I gotta love this internet. You can release a prophetic word out to New Zealand. There's something about New Zealand. I've never been there before, but I feel like I had a dream about it years ago, like way before my EP time. And I've just always had this, this like, I need to go to New Zealand. So maybe, you know, maybe one day I'll come visit you, Pam, to come visit you. And then, you know, Sonia is going to be starting her EP Australia out there. You know, maybe you'll start one in, uh, in New Zealand. We'll have to make the world, the world, uh, trips. Yeah. <laughs> to come, come and stay. So good. Uh, so good. Hello, Chris Sheard. Welcome. Chris Sheard is one of my EP Ontario students and has also been in my mentorship group for uh, just over a year now. Ruth, hello. Ruth, it's awesome to have your sister in the Emerging Prophets Ontario School. Elizabeth, she is, you know, she is just, she's such a joy. Such a joy. All right. I'm going to prophesy a little bit more, guys. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, though. This is my warfare. <laughs> this is my warfare. So, you know, there's that verse in the Bible. that says, resist the devil and he will flee. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes when you're feeling like, you know, tired, you're feeling like, you know, a little bit foggy, you're not feeling focused, your feelings kind of like how I've been feeling, you know, a little bit going on. And, you know, sometimes we just have to rise up and push through. Because honestly, I was sitting in my launch class today, I'm gonna have to go rewatch the whole class because I, I could not absorb anything. I was just like, it was just like, it's just like a wall. You know, and sometimes, you know, there's something going on and it's not just me, but there's something going on in the atmosphere. There's something going on in Can in Canada. You know, by starting the Emerging Prophet School, I realized I picked a fight in the, in the spirit realm. <laughs> but, you know, you pick a fight in Jesus, you have the victory. So when Jesus tell you to pick the fight, you know, you have the victory. And so you can laugh your way to victory. But, you know, so there's a lot of things that are stirred up. There's, you know, and so it's just, you know, I love doing this and coming on here and just pushing forward, stirring up the prophetic, inviting in heaven, you know, connecting with the flow of the spirit, because, you know, you know, I mentioned earlier, I'm a feeler. I feel things. I feel what's going on. I can feel I can feel the atmosphere. I can feel I can feel heaven as much as I can feel the war on the other side. Like there is so much that is just is just over the nation and is just, you know, there is a there's just so much going on. And so what do we do? We don't focus on what's wrong. We don't focus on but when we feel something is off, when we feel that there's a struggle, when we feel, you know, if the enemy is telling you to be quiet, to go low, you should probably open up your mouth, start speaking, do the opposite, you know, don't do your predictable, you know, fleeing responses, but it's time to fight. It's time to move forward. It's time to advance the kingdom and to bring heaven. Yeah. Yeah. You know it, Nate. Bring heaven. We bring heaven. <laughs> yes, need to laugh. <laughs> we just need to laugh and stir up the joy. 
Yeah, just reading your comment, Ruth, you agree there's a big shift happening in the atmosphere in Canada. Yeah, leaning in, it's a season of leaning into Holy Spirit, pressing in and laying aside our own agendas. Yeah, there's, um, you know, I made a post yesterday about the tall, the, the poppies. I posted my picture about the poppies and I really felt this need to, you know, repent of this, you know, as nationally. This isn't about, you know, it's not about me. It's not about a certain church or, but just nationally as a nation, Canada, this tall poppy thing where it's like, we've had this, it's a little bit of a socialist mindset where it's like, well, everybody should be equal. Everybody should be the same. And so we've, and we've had this like false humility as kind of like a national sin, you know, which we need to repent of, you know, and so in our sense of false humility, you know, we've pushed our false humility on people people, you know, organizations, movement, movements that have tried to rise up and have tried to step up, you know, so many prophets, um, even prophets that I know of. One of my mentors, Patricia Bootsma, you know, for example, like, you know, there's been such a push out of the nation. So many prophets like Patricia Bootsma, Stacey Campbell, Patricia King, they're not in Canada anymore. You know, there's been a push of the Canadian prophets who are, you know, the ones actually making an impact. There's a, been a push out of the nation. There's been a rejection. There's been a pushing down. Yeah. And Pam, it's a similar thing in New Z Zealand. The, you know, you're saying the syndrome of smallness, you know? And so I posted yesterday this, like, let's repent of this national thing of the tall poppy syndrome where, you know, and I've repented myself because, you know, it's not, it's, it's not about like one person or one organization, but it's just this sense where we get this thing where we get this mindset of like when people start to rise up and to start to come up, it's this thing of cutting them down, you know? And so, you know, have you ever looked at someone and you're like, oh, wow, they're trying to, you know, they're really going for it. They're like really rising up. They're, you know, they're, they're a head and shoulders taller above everybody else. And they start to be elevated and lifted up and, you know, and then we, you know, out of jealousy and out of that, like, you know, the jealousy or the immaturity, or maybe it's our own lack of our own, you know, significant impact, you know, we kind of tear them down or, or, or people are, you know, beware, beware, you know, ministers in training of the people, especially prophets, people who will lift you up because when people lift you up, they're so happy to throw you down too, because it's that thing of like, you know, it's, it's, it's this hard to celebrate people, you know, when we're not secure in ourselves, it's hard to celebrate people who rise up. And so there's been like, as a nation, this sense of insecurity. And you can see it in the way that we apologize for everything. And I do it too. I got to like, I don't know how to get out of it where you just like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, you bump into someone or, or you, cr you know, someone wants to cross in front of you at the grocery store and you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. And everything you do is like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I exist. I'm sorry. You know, and it's, there's like this shame attached to it, you know, and it's that small mindedness in this like, oh, everybody stay small, stay down. Don't like ruffle the waters, you know, just, just be you you know, and just, just be little, little you and, and you know, Christ in you is not little at all, you know? And so I'm a tall poppy. I'm going to put my hand up. I'm not the only one. It's time for the Canadian, the tall poppies to rise up, you know, but as, you know, as the church, as we rise up, as we, you know, we need to repent of our tearing down of those who rise up. We need to, you know, we need to repent of our judgments on people who've risen up and we've judged them for pride. I've, you know, I've also, you know, need to repent of that as well and have, you know, because when we judge other people, then we, you know, we, those judgments come back on us. And so we have to be so careful. And this is why it's so important that we learn to honor people and to champion them and to celebrate their successes and to not be insecure and to not compare because God is wanting us all to rise up, you know, link arms as a body of Christ and to rise up into the fullness of who we're called to be. You know, because if one rises up, you know, and then there's this pressure to push them back down, but what if two rise up? They can take the pressure better. Or three, what if we all rise up? And then we bear the weight of the 
burden and the pressure together. Instead of just having the ones rising up and getting smacked back down and crushed and then another one rising up getting smacked back down and crushed, you know, and, but like to rise together, this is why we want prophetic schools, prophetic companies, so we can be a strength to each other that we can come, you know, I'm so grateful for like, you know, I have my, so to speak, my, my Aaron and my hers in the spirit who have come alongside me in this season. You know, I think of two people on this call, like, you know, there's um, like Marlene Hood, Julianne August, even Debbie Shakespeare, that's three. Yeah, I can count three. You know, people who've come alongside me and have been strength to me in this season and have supported me because, you know, I can't, as the one, bear the brunt and the burden of it alone. And so I'm so grateful for the body of Christ. And I'm so grateful for my global emerging prophets community and these precious women and the ones that are standing. But my call, my call to you is what are you doing in this season to rise up? Have you found your people and have you found your purpose? Because these are not the days for playing small anymore. And I'm here and I am like pushing, I am pushing guys. And Marlene Hood is pushing with me. She's supporting me in prayer. I'm so grateful her and some other intercessors in EP, like we are pushing, like we're just like pushing back. And we need more to rise up and to stand with us and to push back the darkness and to bring the kingdom to rise and shine. Because though darkness covers the earth, behold, like the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. So we need to rise and shine in this hour. Because we, we're not just waiting, you know, we're not just waiting for Jesus to come back and take us away to rapture us out and to leave the world. You know, Jesus is going to come back. Yes, he is. But it's not a rescue. He's going to come back to conquer. And until he does come back for his, not his damsel in his in distress, but for his beautiful, victorious warrior bride, we need to occupy until he comes. And to get a sense of what is our mission, what is our assignment. Guys, inside of us, don't believe the lie that like, you know, just get a job and live comfortably, raise your family, retire, end of story, maybe travel and then die. Like it's not this like this small minded, like, you know, there's this pattern of like, go to school, work for a few years, have, you know, have kids, retire, and then it's the end. There is something so much deeper. There is something that you're called to, and it is beyond yourself. It is beyond you. It's not just about the life that we're living right here and right now. There is a legacy that you are called to leave for generations, and there is a stirring. These are not times of peace, but these are times to rise up in times of war in the spirit and to rise up as sons and daughters and to know who we are and to take the terror it's not time for pushing back for, for, for defense, but it is time to make moves, bold and courageous, offensive moves, and to take territory. Because guys, we win. We win. You know, I know it looks dark. If we don't listen, you listen to the news, you listen to whatever, it looks dark and it looks like there's evil and it looks like there's so much confusion and there's so much perversion and, per, and permis, promiscuity, you know, out there. <laughs> I forgot how to say that word for a second. You know, you can look at all that and look at the darkness and be consumed by the darkness. But what do you need to do? How do you expel the darkness? You turn the light on. So don't take your light and hide it under a bushel and go into retreat in your silo in self-protect mode, but rise and shine and be the light and expel the darkness. 
You expel the darkness just by standing up and being who you are. Jesus was the light of the world. And we are one with him. You are a city on a hill that should not be hidden. We have great and glorious days to come. And you know when it seemed really dark and when everything was just about to be over and it just seemed like all hope was lost? Sometimes you guys feel like that. Think of Jesus. Think of his disciples who thought Jesus was going to come and maybe, you know, overturn Rome and take over and take his place. And then they find Jesus arrested, betrayed, arrested, crucified, buried. After three years of serving, you know, walking with him, being trained by him, his disciples, like it seemed completely and utterly hopeless. Like the worst of the worst has just happened. Jesus is dead. He's gone. But it wasn't. It was not the worst of the worst. It was the best thing that could have ever happened. And from that moment, there went out the greatest move of God. And it left Israel. It left you know, Jerusalem, and it went out to every part of the world in what looked like this time of great turmoil, chaos, darkness, and defeat turned out to be the most victorious thing that ever happened since the beginning of, man ta- of, of, of mankind, where Jesus took back the keys of hell and death, where he took back from the enemy what was stolen from us and gave it back to his sons and daughters. And he rose up and he redeemed us and he washed us of our sinful nature. So it looked dark, but it wasn't over. There was a greater victory and there was work to be done. We have work to be done. We have work to be done, guys. We have work to be done. Yeah. I'm excited about this season. So, you know, I just want to encourage you guys as you're pushing forward, as you're moving, as you're advancing, don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. You know, and we all, you know, all of us have our areas that we've struggled with from time to time. You know, we've all had areas, whether now or in the past, where you get stuck in those cycles and it's like the enemy knows how to get us, what buttons to poke, those unhealed wounds, those just like patterns of behavior or the areas where we just need to get a little bit healthier, you know, but don't be tripped up. This is time to respond differently. To start responding in a victorious way. To start responding in a way that you actually believe that you are who God said you are. And God says that you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So it's time. It's so time, guys. And it's such an exciting time. God is breaking. He is breaking us out of old patterns and ways of being. He is, we're in such a new season. And there is this, you know, there is this, this invitation to respond differently, to respond differently than that which is familiar and that which is our way of of normally acting and responding. And in the breaking of the pattern, in the breaking of the cycle by responding in a way that Holy Spirit you know, inspires you to respond, there is a breakthrough that you're going to be able to carry into the next season. And so if you feel fear, if you feel that sense of like, I shouldn't release my voice, I should be quiet, who am I? Like that sense of smallness, that sense of keep quiet. You need to shout your voice on the rooftops. You need to break out. You need to have the exact opposite response and you need to push back. Push back the darkness. Surprise the enemy by responding in a way that is very unpredictable. There are new kingdom. I just, I just even release new kingdom ideas and strategies for you. New 
patterns of thinking and acting just they're coming there's just downloads that are just coming and you're going to find you just reach up and just take your god idea just pull it down from heaven okay this is what i'm going to do next time fear peaks up this is what i'm gonna this is how i'm gonna respond next time i hear the enemy say be quiet nobody wants to hear what you say okay this is how i'm gonna respond next time i'm rejected you know just take these ideas that god is releasing and put them in your pocket and be determined that you are not gonna walk in the old ways but that you're gonna step up because we are sons and daughters we're not orphans. Let the spirit of adoption rest on you. It is your portion. It is your possession. It is your precious position of inheritance as a son and as a daughter, first and foremost. And let that just settle so deeply on the inside of you. Yeah, because we got to be sons and daughters first. And then we can be spiritual mums and dads. Yeah, so good. Who? Yeah. <laughs> I feel the fire. I just feel the fire tonight. You know, guys, and I just, I mentioned this earlier, but just want to mention it again because some new people have hopped on. So I'm offering a discount on the prophetic mentorship group that I run between now and February the 14th. So usually people pay $500 for six months of mentorship. We meet every Monday night on Zoom for two hours from 7 to 9 p.m. Join us. So instead of $500, it's going to be $444 until February 14th. So $444. So that is my gift to you, my discount. I, you know, we do already have 11 people in the mentorship group, but I want to see like some fresh, faces some fresh energy i mean we have set we had such a great time last night it just was incredible but you know i want to just see it just continue to keep going and growing because you know people come in they'll come in for six months or 12 months you know they come in and come out you know at their leisure whenever you know they feel their their time is up but it's like it's just this constant flow of people coming in getting equipped growing bearing fruit and then going out into their different spheres of influence and taking the things that they have learned and impacting their families their relationships and just really growing in health we touch on all different aspects of you know you know of health identity new covenant foundations we do a lot of prophetic gift training the last three weeks we've been really focusing on you know all the different ways that god speaks through you know, he doesn't just speak through words. It's not just words and it's not even just words or visions, but he speaks through, you know, we can access his voice through all of our five senses. Like he speaks through touch, through taste, through fragrance, through, through just so many different ways that we can receive from him. And so there's just so much to learn and grow. And when we come together in community, we learn and grow from each other. And, you know, it's a privilege and an honor you know, for me to be able to speak into you. And so I would love to connect with you in that way and to be able to mentor you on in the prophetic mentorship group. So if you're interested, I'm going to post a link to the application form in this live video, you know, or just send me a message. If you have any more questions, I would love to connect with you, but I want to see this group flourish. We're in Canada, USA, and Germany, but I think we can touch other languages other other nations other places and to just spread out there is a move of god and it's going to come through people who know god and to know god means you have to know his voice so this is the prophetic is for everybody not just the prophets anyway guys thanks so much for tuning in and joining me this evening it's been so much fun and I will be back. I'll try not to let another two weeks go by. Just want to say hello, John Doyle, Irene Grekoff, Chels Jackson, Delphina, Guzman, <laughs> Sherry Normore. So good to see you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Love you guys. Bless you. Have a great night.